Carl Schwartz, Chief Executive Officer, Precision Therapeutics. If you're talking about medicine, uh, I think you could talk about almost any industry when it comes to uh, data. Uh, there are reams and reams of data that every industry has. The problem has been the utilization of that data. And with artificial intelligence, that's where this data now becomes truly valuable because machine learning can take this data and put it to use and come up with answers that otherwise a uh, human couldn't, or could never do. There's just too much of it. Precision Therapeutics, I should say, has been around for a while, so it's not a new company. And it has been utilizing its expertise in testing tumors for oncologists. Where we are now is that with uh, the advent of its D-chip, which is basically its artificial intelligence, it's taking all this information that it's gathered, and it's taken over 10 years that they've been doing this, and now putting it to real use because they're able to analyze this. So every time a tumor comes in and it's tested, it goes into the D-chip program, it's, it's compared with other tumors and what the results have been, and then spits out basically a prescription for the oncologist, and it saves the patient many times uh, days of pain and suffering with drugs that aren't gonna do them any good. So with that aside, uh, basically what Holomics does is it, uh, through its referring oncologists, they send the tumors Holomics goes to its lab, tests this tumor uh, in many ways to find out with, the, with available drugs as to how the tumor is going to react. Every tumor is different. Every tumor is different. And so each one reacts differently. So they test the tumors with, uh, with the existing drugs that are out there, and they ultimately send back to the oncologist a roadmap. And that roadmap will be an indication of what drug should be used, how much of that drug should be used, in what order it should be used, and the results are far better because otherwise the oncologist is left to test that patient, by, uh, test the drug on that patient, and that can be painful and very non-productive. Tumor genesis is an important aspect of where we're going with holomics and precision therapeutics. In years past, tumors that were grown were grown in environments that did not replicate the body, whether it be in a mouse or in a rat or uh, in a lab uh, with the more, what they call immortalized cell lines. It did not replicate the body. So the tests were, in large part, inaccurate. Uh, and they were not very useful uh, when applied to the patient and very frustrating for obviously for the testing organization as well as for the oncologist. What we're, work, what we're working on with tumor genesis is, a, is an environment that fools the tumor into thinking it's in the body. Therefore, its reaction will be as if it's in the body. And basically, it is a peptide scaffold, scaffolding that uh, so we in a sense, we dismantle the tumor, and then we reassemble it on this scaffold. And uh, as such, it, um, it grows, and it's tested, and the results will be very accurate in terms of what the body would, uh, would, be, uh, would be showing. And, um, and the oncologist will, will be able to provide for him a prescription, I would think, fairly accurately. We're on the precipice, at least certainly uh, with tumor genesis. We expect to have that uh, by the end of the year so we can begin to use that, as I've stated earlier. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Holomics is moving right along. We have a, you know, uh, several hundred oncologists that send us tumors on a daily basis, and um, that adds into our inventory of 150,000 plus tumors. And so we're doing our job. We have basically three divisions at the company with Holomics. We have our drug testing, which is our CRO business, so we test drugs for the pharmacy company. We do our testing on tumors to determine how the tumors react to certain drugs. And then we have the D-chip, which is basically analyzes all of that 
And then, so when we send back a prescription to the oncologist, it's pretty sophisticated stuff, and he's going to get answers that he wouldn't otherwise have gotten. So we are really in the forefront of this whole technology, and we're not a new company. So this is not like we we have to start from scratch and build up this entire inventory and all this background that we uh, we have it. We're ready to go, and uh, so we're we're already moving along in this direction. I think, in a nutshell, we're on a on the precipice of exponential growth. Uh, we just have to we just have to get our people out there to sell our product and uh, and that we're doing. And uh, and of course as we grow the potential for uh, new developments as we grow into for example we're going to go from ovarian cancer which is our specialty we're moving into lung cancer, pancreatic cancer and other ones that are serious problems for the, for the population of this country. And we are combining with other big companies to utilize their facilities to help us, as well as using our facilities to help them. And we should be uh, on a fast track, as they say. And we have, uh, I think, by acquiring Alomics, Precision Therapeutics has really broadened its bandwidth in terms of uh, where we are and where we're going. So let's talk about Skyline. Uh, we can't forget about that company. We have a, a lot of loyal investors, myself included, who have suffered through this company for a lot of years. And, uh, but I think now we can begin to see some daylight. Uh, we have uh, a sales force, which is expanding. Uh, we have more experienced people. Uh, we're moving overseas. We have uh, now representation in all of Europe with uh, sales uh, with a sales force and we're in um, in some of the uh, uh, major shows in Europe now we're scheduled for that we're now in Australia and uh, New Zealand and we're starting in South America we've got representation in Canada and we expect to see our sales really begin to ramp as we go forward it, it, it took some ground building some and uh, but that's been done and now we're ready to roll this year should be, be the beginning of where we want to be, and next year should be even better than that. We also have a modification of the machine we already have, which is a great machine, but the new machine is going to be smaller, a little more compact, a little more versatile, fewer moving parts, and it'll have uh, an adjunct to it, which will be a vacuum system, which many times is necessary in some hospitals where the vacuum systems in the hospitals are old, and somewhat in, uh, ineffective, and so that'll be something that I think the industry will like. So we have great hopes and plans for Skyline. We expect to see great results shortly. As many of you know, the president has uh, signed um, legislation that basically is what's called right to try. So in the case of a patient who is terminally ill, uh, nothing has worked and they're on their way out, they have a right to try experimental drugs that in the past were never allowed. And so uh, we really are excited because we fit right in. Uh, uh, pharma companies can send us these experimental drugs and we can test them outside the patients. So we don't have to put them through days or months of anguish. We can take and test, uh, have their tumor tested in our lab with uh, these new experimental drugs and see what kind of results we get, and then go test it on the patient. So it, it, that we, we do an intermediary step that really protects the patient, so this will be really the exciting stuff for us.